Now, I know there are a lot of sharpening videos online. I have watched all of them, so why am I making another? Uh, well, as I've watched all those videos and read all the articles and bought things that I didn't need, um, I've learned a lot and I wanna share my approach with you. As I'm sure you're aware, there's probably 10,000 things I could talk about when it comes to sharpening, but we're gonna focus on three main things today. We're gonna focus on chisels and plain irons. Second, we're gonna focus on primary and secondary bevels on those blades, which I'll get into in a second. And lastly, we'll kind of quickly touch on stropping and why that's so important to getting a really sharp edge. Let's take a look at what I mean when I say primary and secondary bevels. So now pretend you're looking at the blade like this and I'm gonna draw it up on the board here. So this plain iron has uh, two different bevels again. So this big section right here is the primary bevel. And that is set at 25 degrees. And it's ground to 25 degrees from the factory. Um, the secondary bevel is what I'm gonna apply uh, when I get the plane from the factory. So that's gonna be taking just a little bit of wood off at the end there, or sorry, uh, metal off at the end, and that's gonna be set uh, at 27 degrees. The numbers don't matter a ton here. It doesn't really matter if it's 28 degrees or 29 degrees. It's just a little steeper than 25. Now here is why that matters. The primary bevel um, doesn't matter that much when you're cutting wood. It's not actually doing any cutting. The only part that's doing any cutting is right at the tip of the blade. Um, so this can be ground very coarsely and this needs to be ground much finer because it's doing the cutting. So uh, this is gonna be the main part that we focus on today. So I'm gonna start out working kind of full speed and show you uh, when I'm doing something like flattening uh, this piece of wood um, and I notice my blade is starting to get dull, how I incorporate sharpening in, into my process and get back to work. So let's say I'm trying to remove the mill marks from this piece of wood. Um, that's gonna take a little while and it's gonna dull the blade. And then get back to work. So now that I went through that kind of full speed, let's go back and take a look at uh, some of the things that I was doing. So now I want you to come in nice and close. So step one was just removing the plane iron from the plane. So this is a low angle plane, but everything I'm about to show you applies to a standard bench plane as well. So this is a bevel up plane. Uh, this is the bevel it's facing up in a standard bench plane. That bevel will be facing down. The sharpening will be the same. So once I get that, uh, I usually dust it off, get the wood out of there, and then head over to the sharpening stones. Next, I'll reach for my honing guide. This one is from Lee Nielsen. Um, all it really does is kind of hold the blade at a particular angle. Uh, you can get lower cost ones on Amazon, but I thought this, thought this one was worth it. It has interchangeable jaws, which is nice for different tools. I will set it to the correct angle, and I'm gonna make a follow-up video about this angle setting jig if you wanna learn how to build it. And um, I put hone right to um, kind of act as a lubricant here. Honerite is an anti-corrosion additive that you can put in water, and what it does is prevent water from rusting things. It doesn't take very long to get a really nice edge when you're using a honing guide because you're getting such a consistent angle as you sharpen. So usually I do about 20 strokes when it's kind of a, a maintenance sharpen. So just to check um, that I have sharpened enough, I'll just tilt the blade up and I'll kind of feel along the edge. And as long as I can feel a little burr, which basically just means you kind of feel a little resistance as your thumb goes on there. A burr is just the metal kind of curling up um, as you're sharpening. As long as I feel that burr, I know I'm ready to go. And just to show you again what I'm working on, that secondary bevel, which you can see is kind of catching the light. Um, it's about a 16th of an inch here. So that's the secondary bevel. And the part that just caught the light, that's the primary bevel. Um, if I ever need to, um, like once the secondary bevel reaches, you know, a third or maybe halfway up, um, it's not really serving its function anymore of allowing me to quickly sharpen. So that's when I will use a core stone over here to reestablish the primary bevel. Just to talk about the stones for a second here, um, these are from DMT. Uh, they're really great. The reason I like these over something like a water stone is because they stay completely flat forever. And you'll notice I don't really need very much liquid, um, which is nice. I, don't, I like that I don't have to go to a sink and kind of just get all nasty. Um, and you can see 20 strokes is all I need 
um, to get a little burr up on the back here. So once that is good, um, I want to knock the burr off the back, so I gently place it down, go back and forth a few times. You'll notice I do not use uh, the ruler trick. Um, I used to, but then I just realized I don't really need to, and I still get good results. Now that I'm done doing my sharpening here, I'm going to swap out my, um, my stones and my angle setting jig uh, with a strop. And all this really is, um, is a piece of leather that has been uh, glued to a piece of wood. Uh, this is kind of the, what seems like a magical step of the process. So right now, if I were to see how sharp this blade was, it actually would not cut this paper uh, very well. So if I tried cutting it, see how it's kind of jagged? It's just not really wanting to cut the paper. It is pretty sharp, but it's not razor sharp, and the strap will help me get razor sharp. So before I, I get going, I put some honing compound on it. Basically what it is is a really fine abrasive um, that'll allow you to kind of get a polished edge on this. So this doesn't have to be like insanely perfect, but I generally want to match that same angle. I put my heel on the blade and I give it about 30 strokes. And I also do the back. So now you can see after only about 30 seconds, that blade is going to be razor sharp. And you know, if you go to test it on a piece of paper like that and it's not cutting super well, go back to the strap a few more strokes. You might just need to kind of hit both sides again uh, and it'll be good. Also, using paper to see how sharp it is is going to save your arm hair. Now that I'm done sharpening, I'm ready to put my iron back in the plane. <laughs> usually just give it a quick little wipe down. I'll also, a lot of times, put a little jojoba oil um, on a rag. Uh, I'll just wipe down my blade. This does a couple things. Um, just protects it from any potential rust. Um, I've also found that it just kind of makes the movement of the um, kind of adjustment knob a little bit smoother since it's you know, kind of a tiny bit lubricated. So I'll get that back in there. Then I'll take a look to make sure uh, the iron is protruding as much as I want for whatever operation. Um, I like to use um, just a little hammer to adjust uh, my blades. Um, even in a plane that kind of has a lateral adjuster, I just kind of find it's easier to control. Um, so then I'll kind of tighten it down and I am ready to get back to work. The cool thing is that this entire process is exactly the same if you're sharpening a chisel. So I'm gonna set this chisel to uh, 32 degrees. Put a little hone right on here. Give it 20 strokes. Place it down. A couple strokes back and forth to knock the burr off. And this one is ready for strapping. So I want to quickly talk about this angle setting jig. Um, I have a link to a video in the description below if you want to make one yourself. Um, I really love this little setup. Uh, it's just got a spot for whatever stone you use. I really love these diamond stones. Um, this is their coarse stone uh, from DMT. This is just for the primary bevel. And then I like their extra, extra fine for my secondary bevel. It gives me a, a really nice edge. So I love having them here. It just kind of uh, makes them stay put. I like not having them you know, fixed to the jig because I can swap out a different um, thing if I want to or for whatever reason I, you know, I want to move one of these. Let's say I'm working on a pair of scissors that I need more space. Um, I really like that. Uh, down here you have kind of different stops that enable you to get a different protrusion length when you're using a honing guide like this. Um, and then this little thing you might have seen me use allows you to kind of uh, get a two degree micro bevel when you're at one of these little stops here. Um, so yeah, check out the link in the description below if you want to make one of these yourself. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments below if you found something helpful or if you try it out and get good results. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe.